Hello, Ellie. Welcome to the Day Job to Dream Job Summit. Thank you so much for having me. You guys, Ellie is a bombshell in every sense of the word. She is the founder of the company Media Bombshell, and she works with visionaries and thought leaders who are ready to become media bombshells. I was one of her bombshells in training. Um, and she teaches them how to master their message and speak in a way that creates the most impact on camera, on stage, and in every conversation. After reporting on NBC for nearly a decade and founding the popular online business to help women get over heartbreak, she developed a unique process for building powerful and purposeful on-camera personalities quickly. Now she works exclusively with entrepreneurs, authors, musicians, and creators who are serious about positively impacting the planet with their message and who are ready to harness the power of their unique voice to do it. Her story has been featured on The Today Show, Cosmo Radio, in The Wall Street Journal, Forbes, New York Times, and many more. By using online video, traditional media, and speaking on stage, she has attracted thousands of loyal fans across the country in a matter of months. You can find out more at MediaBombshell.com. Hello, beautiful Ellie. How are you? Hello. I'm well. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. And I'm so excited to have you today in the Day Job to Dream Job Summit because really the goal of this is to show women she can do it I can too this whole idea of like people showing you what's possible and you've totally been one of those people for me so I'm curious um can you tell us a little bit about your entrepreneurial story and and how you kind of went from day job to dream job Sure. Well, it's interesting because my day job also was not incredibly normal. I was a TV yeah. news reporter for mm -hmm. NBC. So mm -hmm. even my day job was uh, not what most people would consider a normal nine to five, right. but it was my nine to five. It was my day job. Yeah. And I started in news the day after I graduated college. I, I set a lot of big lofty goals for myself mm -hmm. and then proceeded to hit every one of them. So right. uh, by the time I was 28, I was in a top 10 market, which means one of the biggest television markets in the country. Mm -hmm. I was a lead nightside reporter mm -hmm. and I had done things like stand in the middle of a hurricane holding on for dear life <laughs> and uh, went to, to Reno, Italy to cover the Olympics. Cool. And I was in Columbus, Ohio covering a presidential campaign mm -hmm. so I had done and seen a lot of things that that a lot of people I mean that that was the job right? I yeah. got to go and experience the stories mm -hmm. so that I could tell them to other people mm -hmm. and at some point uh, when I just started interviewing for some national jobs like a CNN or that kind of thing mm -hmm. um, I started to realize that I didn't like the person I was becoming and what I realized about that you know I think maybe for everybody a lot of people have had this moment where they just actually take a step back and take a really good look at their life and say, is this really what I want it to be, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, because on the outside, everything was just going swimmingly. And so it took a breakup, a really big breakup for me to actually ask those questions. And yeah. what's interesting is some of the answers that I got back were not what I expected. And I was asking little things and big things like, did I really like red wine? And the answer was no. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and also, was journalism really where my heart was? And that was a hard one for me because the thing that everybody always loved about me was my ability to bring out the heart in any story, right? They would send me to the ones where people were uh, having a lot of emotion and they were just gone through tragedy. So I recognized that even though I was putting a lot of my heart and soul into it every day, it was not actually what I wanted to be doing. And that was shocking. And yeah. so um, I actually, at the time, coming to this realization was in the middle of playing with this idea of how to get myself over heartbreak in a way that felt good. And I'd started playing with this idea with other friends of mine who had also been going through heartbreak where I would send little inspirational texts, things like, you are like a diamond, stunning, sparkling, and damn hard to break. <laughs> and I knew you'd like that. That's so uh, I love and, that. And um, I had a way, <laughs> I, I thought it would be really cool to create a way for you to upload a photo of your ex and virtually burn it yes, and then really share that with your friends. That. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, and it would be great to have just some really good soul level tools to help you yeah, move on um, totally. without having to do all the yucky like, oh, I hate him and here's why or, you know, diving right into the next relationship. So I built this and it just sort of was happening on the side anyway. Mm -hmm. And I decided to leave news and um, start this business to help women get over heartbreak. Mm -hmm. And that's what I thought my journey was going to be, that yeah. I would leave news, and then I would, I would go into this other realm, and I would change women all over the world, and yeah. I would be this relationship expert, and I would be known in that realm. Uh -huh. And um, I was off to the races, and, and I was really yeah. successful with it. I mean, within a month of launch, uh, I was on the Today Show. So and, impressive. So uh, awesome. 
and, and then I was from that, that kind of totally um, blew the doors off. And then I was in the Wall Street Journal, New York Times, Shape Magazine, Cosmo Radio, a lot of stuff yeah. after that. Yeah. Um, and I was asked to speak um, and do media interviews all over the country. I was asked to, you know, share more on video. Uh, and even, you know, people were clamoring for a video course. And mm -hmm. uh, so there was a lot that was coming up for me. And it was really, really successful. But yeah. what's interesting is my my journey, my you know, the universe had other things in mind. Because Doesn't it always, that universe? <laughs> I know. Because at, I Right after I got the Today Show hit, mm -hmm. I started, people started asking me about how I did it. Mm -hmm. Not only landing the interview, which actually wasn't what was the most important thing, it was yeah. how I used every second of the interview. And then mm -hmm. what I did with it afterwards to get all the other interviews. Yeah. And how they could have that skill set mm -hmm. of doing that same thing. And this crazy thing happened where... <laughs> As I was figuring out that, wow, I was really passionate about teaching this, this was a skill set I didn't even recognize that was unique to me. Yeah. And other people were clamoring for it, asking for it. Yeah. And so I started teaching it just on the side. Mm -hmm. I realized, oh my gosh, I am so passionate. I see so many brilliant women mm -hmm. who don't know how to share their message, yeah. who don't know how to actually be present with a potential client and, and win them over just with their words or be really, really captivating on stage, right? Mm -hmm. There were so many people who just needed this work mm -hmm. and they had they were brilliant at what they did, but they didn't have the tools to actually build their business in that way. And so mm -hmm. I started, I, I quickly um, felt that this was where I needed to go, but it took me probably <laughs> a year yeah. to actually honor that and to actually be like, okay, you know, mm -hmm. I had this one way I thought I was going to go and I went this other way. Yeah. Uh, but that's when Media Bombshell was born and that's what I do now. Mm -hmm. And even that, since I've started, has morphed as every business does. It yeah. grows and morphs and changes with you. And mm -hmm. as you can talk about, you know, some of the things I do now are actually in structuring your business so that that's all sound so that you can focus on the messaging and getting your out there in those ways mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. uh, so even that is evolving all the time but that's yeah. that's basically my journey and media bombshell has been around for about five years and so cool. super successful and yeah. uh, I'm loving it oh I love it I love it love it love it I love your enthusiasm and your energy um, and I'm curious because you're so polished and so confident um, do you ever get insecure do you ever have like <laughs> insecurities come up as you're running this business you know especially like you're on camera, you're, you're doing interviews. So like, does that ever come up for you? And if so, like, how do you move past it? Or, or do you move past it? Well, it's interesting. There've actually been, been studies done looking at people who get what we call stage fright, yeah. um, which is that form of like nerves yeah. and you know, we really feel it in our bodies totally. and then start getting in there in our head. <laughs> um, and, and there, there are actually studies on people who get it and people who feel really great on stage. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing is that both people talk about having this exact same sensations in their body. Interesting. It's, it's just about how they respond to it. Oh, I love so that. Yeah. for me, um, mm -hmm. do I get nervous when I'm going to be interviewed? No. Yeah. Do I still have sensations in my body? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love it. I'm still on. And what I see is, like, I, you know, I have that really sexy quality where I start uh, sweating under my armpit. And <laughs> I, uh, <laughs> I used to really, like, if I'm in front of 300 or more people, I will feel it in my chest. Okay. Like, my heart will start beating faster. Yeah. And, you know, I think the interesting thing is, when I first started, I was terrified of those feelings. And I think that's what stage fright actually is. It's being scared it. of what you're feeling. And then letting that yeah. be the thing that sticks in your head oh my gosh, I'm freaking out right now because yeah. these things are happening in my body and I can't even focus. Yes. When in reality, those things are actually gifts. They're actually telling you, you're on now. Mm -hmm. And they're a way for you to actually have more energy. It's like your body saying, here's all the extra energy you need to do this thing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Instead of being this fight with it, it's actually your body stepping up to the plate right along with you. Yeah. So I think there's a difference in how we look at it mm -hmm. as opposed to it not happening. Like I don't know that I'll ever get through an interview or a talk or a video shoot without mm -hmm. sweating. Okay. Right? Yeah. Um, and that's okay. Yeah. Totally. Totally. <laughs> it's super sexy. I know what to wear and what not to wear. But, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's totally okay. So yeah. I don't look at those as insecurities. Okay. Right? I look at those as part of the game. 
and, you know, figuring out how to play with those things. And I think the thing that's interesting too, when I first started my business, I had a ton of insecurity when I, like real insecurity, like I can't do this. And that's my dialogue, right? But I'm insecure about something. It's, I'm not capable of this. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that was around the loneliness of starting a business. I couldn't do it on my own, mm -hmm. right? I was, I just felt so lonely and I wasn't comfortable with that. And mm -hmm. Um, I hated it and, and I didn't know that I could do it. Mm -hmm. And then it was around trying to teach people new things, right? Who am I to do these things? Mm -hmm. And what is very interesting is some of the things that I learned in news really helped me through that. One of the biggest ones was curiosity. Okay. So now if something like that comes up, like I've just been asked to step into a role in one of my uh, VIP clients' businesses that's, yeah. that's actually a lot to do with operations and how, this, how the business is run. Mm. And, you know, I've never, I've done that for my, my own business and I've taught clients how to do it. I never actually stepped into someone's business and <laughs> created everything for them. Yeah. Wow. Um, so, but it, so it's, it's now it's not insecurity. Am I not capable? Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely capable. I just get very curious about what needs to happen mm -hmm. to, to do it well the first time around. Mm, I love it. And, yeah, totally. And something that's really cool about you is how well you kind of, evolve as an entrepreneur, you know, going from being a journalist to having this like get over heartbreak business to like media and now like this new iteration of your business. So what's it like, like any tips when you feel like your message is evolving or changing or if you're like, okay, let's say somebody watching this had a business, but now they, they kind of want to change directions or they're, they're going from their old career to this new thing. Like, do you have a, a nugget or, or two like around what to do when your story evolves or how to handle that? Yeah. Well, I think first of all, knowing that it's inevitable that it's going to is, yeah. is one thing, right? Yeah. Because you have to be ready for it and not yeah. again, fighting it. Mm -hmm. But then I also think that there's this wonderful, there's this wonderful quote, um, from someone I love here, Boga. Okay. And, uh, she says, you have a business and your soul has a business. Mm -hmm. And the journey is making sure the two are aligned. I love that. So it's not, it's not ever that you're going to, you may have moments of feeling perfect alignment, mm -hmm. right? But you got to recognize that your business is its own entity. It's got its own soul. It's got, it's growing in its own way mm -hmm. and it can be all you. It can, I'm talking about solopreneurs here as yeah. well as people with 40 people teams, you know, yeah. um, it, it doesn't matter. It's its own thing and mm -hmm. you're your own thing. And mm -hmm. so those two, it's this constant dance. It's this constant making sure they're in alignment. Yeah. That's awesome. I, I really like that like distinction there. Um, another question I had, how to become a media bombshell? So you have this really juicy video training that people can get. Um, who is that for and you know, how will it help them become a media bombshell? What's really interesting is I think when I first started, I was thinking this, this work is for people who want to do media interviews. Yes. And um, some people have no desire to do media interviews and some mm. people also don't understand why they should do them. Mm. Uh, so what's interesting is the people who have no desire to do it. I'd be very curious as to why. And that's mm. been an interesting thing for me, especially in my workshops, which is you've been to one of my I workshops. Have, you guys, they're favorite. so much fun. They're like, they're like Ellie times 10 with cute little snacks. And like, so, I, I don't know, our workshopping session where everybody gave advice. It was like completely transformational. So little plug to you. <laughs> Check them out. They're so fun. They're my favorite way to teach. And, you know, what's interesting is I get a lot of people there who say I have no desire to do media interviews, so which was my first clue that maybe this isn't just for those people who want yeah, to Yeah, totally, totally. Uh, but the thing that I think is so cool about, about getting ready for a media interview or the idea of prepping in that way is mm -hmm. it's a whole different way of thinking about language. Mm -hmm. So if I were to ask you right this second to give me mm -hmm. a way to feel engaged in your business in 10 seconds, mm -hmm. right, how would you do it? And I'm sure you, because you're so I worked with savvy. You. No, because I worked with you. I love, yeah, no, it totally reframed the way that I thought about describing what I did. Or what yeah. I and, and, and so those things can be used in so many realms. Thinking about language differently, thinking about if you only had 30 seconds, what's the one thing you would share with someone about your work, mm -hmm. right? That can inform a whole talk that you give. That can be the one golden nugget yeah. that you give out in a 30 minute talk. And everything else about the talk is building up to that or, you know, coming from that. Yeah. Right. Um, totally. so, so I think this work, a lot of it is about the preparation mm -hmm. and about what you need to do to be ready for three minutes on your work 
and in making tremendous impact in that amount of time, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And then, and then the other thing that I think is that it gives you the confidence to do things like online videos, to do things like mm-hmm. interviews, like what you're doing right now. Mm-hmm. Because if you know where you stand, what you stand for, and how to speak about your work in a really compelling way, mm-hmm. then it just opens a lot of doors to a lot of audiences that you never would have otherwise been in front of. Yeah. So really, the the video training that I have is for. Anybody who understands the importance of being able to speak about their work in a truly effective way Mm -hmm. and to start with soul. So it's not about... It's not about just having a great 15-second thing about here's what I do, Mm -hmm. right? It's about really starting a different conversation, Mm -hmm. starting it on a different level. Mm -hmm. So it's for anybody who sees the power in actually using those kinds of words, making your words matter. Mm, I love that. Making your words matter. Cool. Awesome. And we can find it at mediabombshell.com slash, I think it's becoming a media bombshell. Is that right? Yes, I think it is too. Okay. I'm sure. I'll send it to you. <laughs> okay, cool. We'll link to that in the show notes, you guys. Um, another question. What's the best part about being an entrepreneur for you? The freedom and flexibility. Mm -hmm. And for me, that looks like really strong boundaries, which is kind of hilarious (laughs) Um, because those two don't necessarily go together. But what I mean by that is I have an 18-month-old named Campbell. Mm -hmm. He's amazing. And before I had him, I was really, really um, appreciative of the the fact that I could work from anywhere, Mm -hmm. that I had this flexibility. But with a child for me has come this very acute sense of time Mm -hmm. and how I spend each day. Mm -hmm. And, um, it might be because in the mornings we go through this little calendar thing where we put what yesterday was today is every morning we do it, (laughs) but it also might just be because there's so much less time like to myself Mm -hmm. and I really cherish the time with my son or with my husband alone Mm -hmm. or Mm -hmm. so, uh, it's just a different dynamic. And so the thing that I think is, is just so juicy for me is literally in the last 18 months, I've been able to play with my schedule until it felt really, really good and I could make whatever I wanted. And then once I had it, and and actually all along the way, my boundaries were super clear Mm -hmm. to my my clients Mm -hmm. and very respected, just like I respect theirs. Mm -hmm. And I could play uh, when I wanted to play. And a lot of my Mm -hmm. work feels like play too. So Mm -hmm. that's great. But I had the freedom and flexibility to, for example, take Wednesday afternoons off. Yeah. And for the summer, I do, you know, half days on Fridays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I have that ability and it gives me, and I'm traveling for all of July. You know, I'll be by a beach for all of July. Those kinds of things I couldn't do if I wasn't an entrepreneur. So I love it. That's awesome. Any last piece of advice or words of wisdom for our viewers who are making their own transition from day job to dream job and, you know, coming into their own as an entrepreneur? There was a a saying we used to have in news. (laughs) Okay. It was beware of finding what you're looking for. What I mean by that okay. is people would go into a story, right? You'd like, you'd mm-hmm. see here about the story that happened. You're going to go cover it. Mm-hmm. And you'd have a sense already. You'd, on the way there, be making up. I'm going to talk to these three people. They're going to give me these three sound bites, and I'm going to have the story made. And that's what it's going to look like. Mm-hmm. And what that does is it doesn't allow for you actually experiencing what's going on and being able to be open to the fact that there may be some other angle to this that you never even imagined, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And when you think about that with business, I was just having a conversation with someone today who was like, sales calls are so hard for me, right? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, tell me about that. And she did. And I said, what was hard about that call? Mm -hmm. What it was is that she had decided that sales calls were really hard for her. And so every sales call she had, she was seeing that. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing when you start a business, right? Mm -hmm. Beware of finding what you're looking for. If you think it's going to be impossible to do, if you think your business has to look this certain way, if you think that, you know, you're only going to have this client, Mm -hmm. it's great to have some goals and some some sense of where you're going, but Mm -hmm. also be open to the idea that maybe it's not going to look exactly like you think it will. Maybe the things you'll need, the coaching you'll need, Mm -hmm. the way it'll twist and turn along the way isn't going to feel exactly like you thought it would. And all of that is great if Mm -hmm. you're open to it. I love that. So much wisdom, so much juicy Ellie goodness. Thank you so much for being here with us today. Of course.